<laughs> okay, now who is looking for liberation? Who is looking for becoming freedom? So this will start happening only when Nana Yoga, you come into Nana Yoga. Before that, it doesn't happen. Right? So who is that? Who is seeking freedom? Okay. I'll give you an example. There's a fan and there's electricity. The moment electricity is there, fan starts rotating. Okay. So now electricity cannot blow air. Fan cannot move. Who is blowing air? A combination of electricity and fan. Individually, they cannot do. Similarly, a combination of Atma and Anatma is involved in karma. A combination of Atma and Anatma. That's called Jiva Atma. Jiva alone, Jiva is the ego. That alone cannot do something. Atma cannot do anything. Atma is like electricity. Jiva is like a fan. So individually they cannot do anything. Together they can do something. But there's a problem here. The problem here is Atma is consciousness. Okay. And body, mind, intellect is matter. The matter and consciousness cannot be together. Nothing can combine them. Like oil and water cannot merge. But they appear to be merging. The Jiva Atma and Parama, Jiva, uh, Jiva and Atma appear to be, sorry, body, mind and intellect and Atma together seem to be a combination called Jiva Atma. Non-self and self appear to be again one entity. That one entity which binds them together is called ego. Now, if you look in reality, a thing called ego cannot exist. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing can combine Atma and Atma. Right? They are opposite nature, like oil and water. But practically, they seem to be combined in nature. Reality is not possible. Reality, this ego is false. But apparently, there seems to be solid and real. Who is dreaming your life? Ego alone has no existence. Ego derives its existence from Atma. But ego thinks I, my, my strength is body, mind, intellect. Ego doesn't understand I am the Atma. Jiva Atma forgets Atma and say I am Jiva and body and mind is my nature. And it's driving and it derives the strength from Jiva Atma only. It's an illusionary entity, it is created. And being illusionary entity, it can live only on illusion, it cannot live on reality. Ego lives not on the present moment. It lives only on the past. Memories. Ego lives only in the future. Projections. Ego cannot be in the present moment at all. Present moment, only energy pattern is there. In the present moment, there is no subject of the duality. Ego cannot exist and survive in the present moment. So that's why Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga, the teaching is to live in the present moment. If you are able to live in the present moment, ego cannot survive. If ego doesn't survive, you will fall back into universal consciousness. Otherwise, you are individual consciousness. Ego is keeps you individual consciousness. Ego is nothing but a bundle of memories, past, project in the future. The cosmic mind does no binding. No. Cosmic mind, there's no binding. Universal conscious, there's no binding. Right? So now, the challenge is ego, which is not real at all, illusion entity. In your spiritual journey from samsari to sannyasi, you're trying to drop an ego, which doesn't exist. <laughs> which has no existence of its own. <laughs> which is not real. What are I trying to do? Ego is surviving memory, which is not real. Present moment, there is no ego. The future is again imagination. That's why it's called 
Kalpa. Kalpani. You are living always in Kalpani, imagination. Not living in the reality. Understand? So the, if the moment, even for a brief moment, if you are slipping into reality, the grace will flow. What is grace? Grace, grace is nothing but meaningful coincidence happening in your life. Something which is more meaningful for you. There are many coincidences in life. Some accident, some happening somewhere. But some meaningful coincidence which adds value to your life. That's called grace. It can be meeting some guru or it can be getting some spiritual book. It can be meeting something which will come out of your situation. Right? So these meaningful coincidences in your life, the possibility keeps on increasing the more and more you start living in the present moment. The more and more <coughs> you start living in the present moment. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Atma Moksha Atam Jagadidaya. More and more grace you start observing every moment of your life. Otherwise, grace is an accident. Grace is causeless. But the causeless cause you start seeing everywhere as you start living real in bhakti and karma yoga. Atman mokshatam jagat. So, the entire spiritual journey anywhere in the world is to get rid of this ego fellow. Without knowing, the ego itself is not there. <laughs> we are real. <laughs> it's an illusion. Ego itself is the biggest falsehood. I know when we go to somebody's house, I'm afraid because they're watching a TV serial. They don't want to close the TV serial. They'll give me a big album. See this album. This is my marriage album. This is open enough. See, see, see. Okay, because they want to complete the TV serial. And this is big album. Nowadays, photo is cheap now. Hundreds of photos. I, poor fellow, start going through. Half an hour, they complete their TV serial. Did you see the album? Yes. Did you see me? Where are you? Chetty fellow. <laughs> that person is now, it's, it's 80 cages. Yes, Chetty fellow. See, see, this is me only. <laughs> the Chetty fellow photo has become you. <laughs> All your memories are not you. You are claiming all your memories as me. That's called ego. Total falsehood. Ego is not an impression. Ego is not an impression. Ego, you, uh, ego is an impression. A past recording, recording. Actual recordings are discrete events in memory. Unconnected events. That unconnected events, ego will put stitch together and create story. Ego is a storyteller. Right? <coughs> All of us, life has a story. You see, I'm so successful man in life. Because he neglects all the failures. Because ego wants to stitch together all success events. See, I'm a miserable. I've been suffering in life. I'm a doormat in my life. <laughs> all good events you forget it. So ego is a good storyteller. That's why all of us look like, I love stories. <laughs> Tell me who doesn't love story. Everybody has a case of love story of their life. Everybody has a story, no? So many movies are like this. <laughs> movies are like this. Everybody wants to tell a story of their life. Everyone listens to story because ego is a storyteller. Ego is not at all real. Okay. So now you have a chance to get out of this recycling business. <laughs> okay. Recycling business by recognizing who you are. Who am I? Right? Until you recognize who am I, you will not be able to come out. The ego is a false entity. And the false entity, you cannot remove it because it's not there. Because it's a product of past. You're trying to remove in the present moment. The moment you remove something else, come it. <laughs> you have to understand, it's not me. It is like somebody was afraid of a ghost. You want to get rid of ghost. The mantravadi says, magician, uh, that uh, sorcerer says, you go into a burial ground, bury that ghost and come back. So he goes in the midnight, buries that ghost and comes back. Again, the ghost is chasing him. The ghost is in shadow. Shadow has no existence. What has no existence? You can't remove it. Ego is that no existence for him. You have to understand it's a shadow. So the understanding is called nana yoga. So karma yoga and bhakti yoga opens up grace in your life. 
the grace is causeless the grace you can't demand grace you can't command it's not cause and effect grace comes out of surrender karma yoga bhakti yoga matures into surrender so did i answer the question of ego who has the question of ego 